Their windmill design uses an octagonal base for stability and a multi-level design for height. This is to reach the stronger winds higher up in the air. Now that they have the design, they have to construct the scale model. Even though it was a little challenging, my favorite part was building the windmill because it was so much fun working together and trying to figure out something, acting like real engineers. On to the testing phase. The team has to decide on the material for the blades. It looks oh like kind of like fall yeah. off. Yeah, it does. It's it's like total total like. Can you want to take this for me? So like, these are too heavy. There we go. Cards were the best. So blades mean a lot. The direction of the blades really mattered because we had it turning one way and it kept going back and forth, not in the right direction, but then we turned it towards the wind, which really got it moving. We had three models and the first two did not work out so well, but our third one worked out pretty well because it was high enough for wind to hit, the blades were just long enough, and it was very stable. Looks like it's working great. Now it's time to present the results. Oh, wow. Hey, you guys. Your turbine looks great. Thank you. Oh, you guys did an awesome job. So what made you put the playing cards in this direction? Well, the cards we put this way because that way the cards could capture the wind and the kinetic energy better. Mm. But if we face it more to the left, then it wouldn't capture the wind as well. Sounds like you guys did some good testing. So did you try any other materials for your blades? Well, actually, we didn't use any of the construction paper or the paper because it just looked really flimsy. Like, it wouldn't pick up the wind as much, so. We ended up going with the cards because they were the most sturdy, flexible, and the easiest to work with. Wow, well, it looks like you've made some great choices here. It's, it's just awesome. Well, this is a good time to bring in our friend, Andre, who is going to pretty much show you how to take your windmill model and put it into the computer game. Hey, Andre. Hey. Meet Andre Brown. He's a 3D modeler who specializes in games. If anyone can get that windmill into the virtual world, it's Andre. What we're going to do is today, you guys did a really good job of making a scale model windmill. We're going to do a more photorealistic windmill to go into our game. Cool. In 3D, it's just basic 2D points and lines in 3D space, and it makes polygons. It's all simple math, but we're going to get a little bit more detailed and more in-depth in making a real windmill. It's really big. Yeah. yeah. We have to go inside of it and look around and see all, how humongous it is. We're looking at a 100-meter real windmill. So what we're going to do, we're going to start and build an actual wireframe. You see the points here? Mm -hmm. Connecting? Yeah. Yeah. They're all simple polygons. Cool. This entire shape is made up of nothing but polygons. Whoa. I need some help making another blade here. You want to give me a hand, Samantha? Yes. I had to get into the program and click around to make the polygon shapes where it would connect all the dots so that I would have a shape of my own. Now, do I need to make another polygon? Yeah, actually you are. You're going to connect the lines okay. to create the shape. So just point, mm -hmm. click, connect those two. Oh, I got it. There you go. <laughs> See it. Let's add some more life to it and put some textures on it. We want to give it a sense that it's in the real world, so we have a little weather. We've weathered the texture. Oh, yeah. Oh, so see. that's why we have a little, you know, the scuff marks and the scrapes. So how do you get the texture on there? Um, just bring up the materials. What surprised me the most was how you can change all the different textures for an object. Like you can have like green or checkered or like like blue, dark blue. So that was really fun. Let's get into the game now. Okay. okay. A little adjustment to do in here. Okay, we have our windmill in the world now. Yeah. We still hmm. need to place it where we want it to be. Griffin, you want to give it a shot? Sure. You should put it by that one spot over there. Just so like, you know. yeah. See how easy it is to tweak it and put it in the world? It's really not that hard. Mm -hmm. That does it. The 3D windmill is in the virtual world, and our three game designers have made a lasting oh, contribution yeah. to the game. I still heard the four of you still working here. How did everything go? Everything was good. really yeah, fun. Totally fun. Wow, it looks like you guys have actually completed the game. <laughs> You're officially engineers now. Way to go! Yay! Yay! Well, they're not really officially engineers now. They should probably go to college first. 
They did figure out how to design, build, and test a wind turbine, and they got their feet wet in the world of 3D modeling and computer game design. I would consider becoming a computer engineer just because I think it would be so cool to make my own world about how I would think it would be. That's pretty awesome. I think it would be very fun being a computer engineer because I love playing computer games and to be able to build them and kind of make them your own in a way would be even more fun. I think computer engineering would be a fun thing to go into because I like designing things and you get to design things in computer engineering and you get to wear jeans to work. So that's the best part. If you'd like to create teaching tools like this, or maybe just create your own world, maybe you can discover engineering too.